Ackerman from Chiba Doge. Um, so we've got Alexander, we've got Max, we've got Leo, and Roof is in here, and Roof is uh, he's doing the recordings for the uh, YouTube. Um, but guys, I'm going to let you take it away with your presentation. I ask again before, um, you know, we get started, mods, um, just because you're unmuted, don't interrupt, please. Let these guys finish. And then when they say they're ready for questions, um, everybody's going to have ample choice or ample time um, to, number one, ask a question. And then I want to limit the, uh, the questioning to one question per person. That way, other people have an opportunity. There's no reason that one person should be sitting here asking 20 questions, eating up all the time. If we've got questions left over that do not get answered um, because of the time constraints, we'll put it together in a Word document. We'll send it over for Leo and and um, and Max and, and Alex. They'll get everything filled out, um, answer our questions, and I'll present them to the, uh, the community. So with that said, uh, gentlemen, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you for that, Drew. Um, before we get into any presentation or anything like that, um, I obviously want to just you know, give a quick introduction of who we are, what we do, and how we even got to this point to begin with. Um, so myself, Alex, and Max, um, the three of us that are in here right now, we're, we're part of the core development team of Shiba Doge. Um, we've been running Shiba Doge for over a year now. Uh, we launched in December 24th of, of last year, and <clears throat> we've seen a, a pretty pretty good uh, path that we've been able to pay for our community and our project moving forward. We have a pretty large ecosystem of different products that we've introduced to the space, and I want to say they're all in a pretty nice stage of um, development, and the the amount of success that we've seen um, through these projects is uh, something that we're extremely happy with. Our growth growth rate is uh, very healthy and we're on track to, to continue to you know bring these numbers up as far as holder base and everything else goes. Um, and I mean, yeah. So obviously everything that had happened in the past week was something that popped up on our radar. Um, I'm referring to, you know, all of the things that had been happening in Shibnobi. So we actually sat down as a team and very quickly were, you know, kind of like putting on a pro and con board of, you know, where it would benefit us and our community and the Shibnobi community if we were to step in and the cons of um, us stepping in, right? So obviously we've been on a very limited time to talk things through and uh obviously the plan that we've come up with is something that we brainstorm very quickly since you know it is an urgent matter so nothing is 100 percent finalized this proposal that we're giving is something that you know we had been just working on over the past couple of days and uh, we believe it's good but we believe it can also progress and become better and bigger over time but We'll, we'll be more than happy to present what we've came up with so far and some of the ideas that we have and how <clears throat> we expect to to move forward. Uh, I see Peter just joined here too. Peter is also one of our core developers. But um, Max, before I go on, is there anything else that you want to add before we before we give our presentation? Or no, Alex? nothing. Nothing to add right now. I think let's let's get into the plan. Let's discuss the plan and, and the vision and what we're trying to achieve here. And then as that as we do that naturally, I'll jump in and throw out whatever I think is needed and then also answer all questions. Um, but uh, okay. like you said, it, this is very early stages and we wanted to speak to the community beforehand before we made any major decisions or, or plans. Uh, and we wanted to get all of your take an insight on this before coming up with a formal uh, plan and direction. But uh, we understand how critical it is to jump in here as soon as possible to get a resolution and turn things around as soon as possible for the community. So um, with that being said, um, that leads us to where we are right now. And let's just jump into the plan and take it from there. 
Yeah, okay. Leo, let me, okay. Leo, Max, let me also jump in and say something. I wanted to just, you know, obviously this is a very uh, unique time. Not every project has had such consistent developer access, you know, to some of the, or the founding developer. And through this transition, I know there's probably quite a few people that are upset, quite a few people that are also enthusiastic about where the project can go. But one of the things that really stood out to us and has been a commitment or sort of the, the, the constant that makes this really special is the community and how strong the community has remained to, to be throughout all the changes, all the utility, you know, all the, all the different projects that have sort of come and went. Um, and we saw that as an opportunity to sort of play into what our project is all about. And what our project is about is unity and unifying the DeFi space. Our, our belief is that you can only thrive in an emerging industry if people come together. And we think this is an incredible opportunity to do so. This would be a monumental move for the Web3 space. I don't believe there has been anything in the past that has happened when it comes to Web3 or tokens. I know I've seen it in the NFT space, but I have yet to see it in the token space. So this could be a, a monumental shift that also opens up a plethora of opportunities for the whole industry as a whole. So I look forward to this conversation. Amazing. I agree with, with everything you said. Um, so the main reason why this even concerned us and got our attention to begin with is obviously um, Shinjo was a project that launched around the same time we did. We, we, we both, uh, I believe you guys uh, launched a, a month or maybe max two months before before Shiba Doge had launched. But regardless, you know, it was something that was on our radar and it's some, uh, a project that had achieved great heights and, and saw its successes and downfalls and whatever else it saw through its uh, existence so far, right? So it's always something that, that had been on our radar. It's something we even worked with in the past. We did our space event in collaboration with you guys. So um, we've always had an open-ended relationship with, with the Shibnobi community. So upon hearing the news, we decided, you know, it would be, it's not in our best interests or anyone who's involved in Web3's best interest to see, you know, a project of this magnitude fail or have no leadership or have no plan or uh, a road to kind of, um, you know, mature and, and grow and um, uh, pretty much advance as a project. So what I'll be presenting presenting to you guys is a pretty much a plan A and a plan B, which is, like I said, something that we had come up with in the very the short amount of time that we had to kind of uh, brainstorm this idea. Um, we would, over the next couple of days, want to have a plan C and a plan D as well, just to add on to, you know, more options. But um, we're more than comfortable with sharing with what we have so far. And uh, we've already presented this to, to Cliff and and Drew in, in um, you know, in the group chat that we're in. But let, let, let's start off with plan A. And plan A is um, something that we want to kind of be the main um, the main event, which would pretty much be keeping Shibnobi up and running as a standalone project, right? And what, what do I mean by that is uh, pretty much what you guys know uh, with the Shinja token, with Shibnobi would continue to, to thrive and continue to, to progress as you guys know it. You, no V2, no V3, no nothing like that. Um, what you guys have now, the tokens you have now would stay in place. And what we would do is pretty much come in, stabilize, grow, and reward. So that would be the three three um, main points that we would kind of like bring to the community um, with a takeover. And what, what do we mean by that? So when I say stabilize, uh, it would be obviously the first thing would be the leadership transition, right? So obviously it would be us stepping in and kind of starting to pave the road for what the future entails for the Shiba, uh, Shibnobi project. Sorry if I mistakenly say Shiba Doji here and there, I'm just so used to saying that. So if you catch me in that, just, just you know, you guys will know. But anyway, it would be the leadership transition. And, and we have a team of 20 plus developers, marketers, creators, community managers, just employees across the board that, that we've been able to hire and bring on um, over the past year of us being um, active as a project, right? Us ourselves, um, myself, Peter, Alex, and Max, we're 
very successful in terms of running community led projects and we're very successful in being able to uh, handle the load management and be able to scale things to certain points. Um, on top of all that, we're, it's no secret that we're Doge and Shiba whales. We're well off um, as far as our financials go. So we're not financially motivated by anything. We're more motivated by leaving a legacy and building something in the space of Web3 that's going to pretty much uh, kind of cement uh, what we've done in, in the blockchain forever, in a sense. So we're more than passionate and we're more than motivated because of our our love for the space and our love for the community and the people who are involved in it. <clears throat> now, uh, the next point of stabilization would be to kind of like uh, stabilize the liquidity into the project. So we would actually inject a certain amount of liquidity it, back into uh, the project which we don't know if that's gonna immediately fix things or not, or if people will use it as exit liquidity or whatever the case is, but we decided we'll come up with a, a number and, and inject a you know, certain amount of liquidity back into the liquidity pool there. Um, we've come up with an incentive plan for a uh, uh, committee of community leaders, right? So we have a, I, I wouldn't say like a committee of people that make the decisions, but a committee of people who will actually kind of be your go-to um, type of type of like leadership that uh, a community of new people that are coming in will go to and look up to, right? So kind of what we've done back with our project, I know the people who are listening in who are part of Shiba Doge and um, our ecosystem, they know kind of like how we like to have things structured and, and laid out. So we, we kind of like implement the stuff that we see works in our project into Shiba Do into uh, Shibnobi as well. Uh, the next main point would be to grow. Sorry, somebody's car is going off in the background, I think. Okay, it looks like it's gone now. The, the next selling point would be to grow the community. Um, what that would entail would be a revamped roadmap. So we'd have to completely redo the road, roadmap in something in a way where we see fit, in a way where we see can... Uh, benefit the community the most and, and the project. So a, a revamp roadmap, a, we, did, we do a dashboard integration on the Shiba Doge site, which also gets 50,000 plus monthly active users on a pretty much a monthly basis. So uh, the traffic and the, the eyes that will be pretty much um, put on uh, Shibnovi would be included into the marketing and everything else that comes with, with Shiba Doge as well. We'd restructure the technology and the utilities for uh, pretty much mass adoption. Obviously, we've looked at some of the utilities that Shibnobi has. Some of them we like, some of them we feel are unnecessary. But one thing that we did kind of um, recognize from the very beginning is, you know, even the, the utilities that are there that are strong, nobody really uses them. And we, we'd come up with a different approach on how to implement these utilities and actually have them be usable and feasible in the community and something that the project can benefit from rather than just having it there and you know paying people to run it and paying developers to update them and then have nobody use it and you know so so that's something that we uh we noticed and would need to to work on as well the next thing would be to <clears throat> pretty much um, narrow the focus on the strength of the projects and focus on older growth and sustainability and kind of find that niche and find that perfect um, waypoint to to scale Shibnobi back to, um, you know, the heights that it should be at. Because we do believe that, you know, the community here is just as strong as the community that we have over at Shiba Doge. Um, it just, you know, a certain, uh, the bear market gets to people, right? Let's, let's be real. The bear market gets to people. That's something that most communities have dealt with in this space. Uh, I know we've dealt with it ourselves and we were able to kind of um, have our community uh, understand what it takes to survive a bear market and how to understand what a bear market even is rather than have everyone panic and be you know, all over the place. Uh, we took the time to actually explain things. We put out informational videos. We have our own YouTube channel that kind of um, 
educates people on a daily basis. We pump out content on there that actually helps, um, you know, people in Web3 uh, learn more about Web3 and kind of know how to navigate their way through you know, Uniswap, Etherscan, um, all the beginner friendly stuff that, that everyone, you know, in this space should know about. We, we make sure we try to hit every point. Uh, we're fully transparent on everything that we do. We hold two AMAs weekly and kind of give community updates and answer questions on a weekly basis. So we, we understand that transparency is key. We personally don't <clears throat> believe that doxing is the way to go. We've seen uh, a lot of success and we've seen a lot of pressure for us to actually dox. Uh, We've give, given our reasons as to why we won't dox and why we're not going to dox, but that's a different conversation for a different day. Um, but we we understand what it takes to scale and run a project. Now, the next thing after um, narrowing the focus on the strength would be to hire a dedicated development team and marketing team to actually run this thing the way that it's supposed to be ran um, with a dedicated team rather than having to like build a team every time something needs to be done or uh, a marketing campaign needs to be ran. So uh, for our projects, we have dedicated teams, uh, whether they're small teams of two or three or larger teams of 10 to 12. Um, we have dedicated teams for each aspect of our project regard, regarding Shiba Doge, regarding our Fern token, regarding our uh, NFT projects and everything else that we have in the pipeline. We, we make sure we put a dedicated team on board and make sure that it's ran by uh, people who know what they're doing in a professional manner. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the next thing would be cross integration with our uh, Shiba Doge ecosystem products, which are all development in progress. Um, we actually have a very big um, thing that's coming out actually this month with our EFT uh, project, which would be you know the first equipable NFTs for our Shiba Doge NFT collection. Um, that's something that we're actually going to roll out and introduce to the entire crypto market, uh, the entire NFT market. Excuse me. Um, and we could get into that on a different day too, but, uh, cross integration with all of our products would be something that, uh, would be, be an option if Shinja were to enter the Shiba Doge ecosystem. The next thing would be ongoing cross promotions with all of our Shiba Doge channels, which we have about 3 million plus of monthly reach. Um, so we have 3 million plus impressions of monthly reach on across all of our social medias. So obviously um we we promote all of the projects in our ecosystem and if she uh Chibnobi was in our ecosystem it would be part of that um part of those promotions right uh we would access we would give access to promotional opportunities with existing marketing partnerships and affiliates which uh go upwards of 100 million plus impressions of monthly reach so you know being able to be put on the map is not a problem for us we have we're more than capable of you know, marketing things more, more than capable of being put in front of people's faces and kind of like, you know, deleting that factor of like, hey, can you please help and chill? Can you please help and chill? Like, yeah, we understand that that helps a lot. But what also uh, is a main contributing factor is having a team that knows how to be uh, presentable and presented and mark marketable. And that's something that we know how to do. And that's something that we actually um, focus on maintaining pretty heavily <clears throat> the third key point would be to reward uh, the community and what we mean by that is uh, we'd have exclusive shiba doge airdrops and claims the you know that, that that's including um but not limited to the efts that we have coming out and different um different promotional products that we have in in the ecosystem and the pipeline so obviously we, we believe heavily in rewarding our communities we've uh uh, correct me if I'm wrong, anyone, but I, uh, over the past year, we've probably given over, given away over a million and a half to two million dollars in prizes just to our community, which is a huge feat. Uh, so, so we highly believe that you know rewarding the community is something that is healthy and keeps people engaged and active, and just like why not reward people if we can? Um, the next key point would be a whitelist access to free Shiba Doge EFTs, which is something that is um, new that nobody in our ecosystem has pretty much gotten their hands on yet. So uh, like I said, that's a new introduction and we'll leave that for a different day of discussion. But 
uh, it's part of the reward system again, and ongoing rewards for a committed community, um, pretty much that, like, how, how can I explain this? So it, in a way, I mean, this last key point, the reward key point, isn't something that we want to focus on more than all of the other key points. It's just we understand that being able to give back to the community, whether it be something small or a huge grand prize, is something that creates excitement and it's something that people look forward to in a way. So, you know, it's just something that's structured uh, to, 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 to not fail, right? People like rewards, so why not reward them? Now that's plan A. So plan A is to keep keep it running as a standalone and implement, you know, some of those things that we talked about and 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 try to see if we can revive this thing into a way uh into a uh successful project and and try to get it to newer heights that uh we believe that it could reach. Plan B, and this is something that it would literally happen if there is no other option, it would be to absorb the, uh Shibnobi. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, I'll read out what I wrote. So one possible solution in the event that plan A is not feasible would be to execute plan B, which involves merging tokens. This would entail absorbing the Shinja token into the Shiba Doge project and, and bringing over Shinja token holders to Shiba Doge. The liquidity of both projects would be combined and the Shinja token holders would be granted tokens based on the current liquidity and market cap of Shinja at the time of the merge. So plan B is a path that will pretty much give holders an opportunity to exchange their tokens for Shiba Doge. The goal is to keep Shinja up and running as a standalone project and work hard to bring it to new heights and successes that it has not achieved before. But in the in, in any case that we see like, hey, you know, that's not going to work and that's not feasible and there are just too many liabilities and too many loose ends with what there's already happening here, then we'd resort to like a plan B. Um, and if a merge were to happen, the only way that we would see it be fit is if, you know, if you have X amount of, of Shinja tokens, let's say you have $10 of Shinja tokens, for example, you'd be able to convert those and get $10 worth of, Sh of Shiba Doge tokens. So that's something that's the, the conversion rate wouldn't be like uh, something that we're going to be too, too anal about in a sense, right? We, we'd be like, okay, you have X amount, we'll give you X amount, make it fair. We'll make it so that the liquidity and the market cap match to a point where there's no confusion, there's no questions, there's no um, nobody complaining about like, hey, I got less or I got more than I should have. So, but anyway, like I said, that's plan B. Now, the like I like I said in the beginning of this call, we want to come up with a plan C and a plan D as well. Um, and maybe even move plan B down down the ranks to uh, plan C or D even. But we do know that there is an opportunity here. We do know that together we could be a lot stronger. Our project is all about unity. We've been pushing that since day one. We've brought Doge and Sheep together, and that was our vision. Um, considering we've made millions of dollars on um, Shiba Inu and on Dogecoin, we wanted to be able to bring um, you know that vision to Web3 investors and be able to bring that same experience that we had and kind of the, the, the success and the positivity and just everything that we felt with those communities. When, when they were on their run up, we wanted to be able to kind of recreate that in, in the way that we saw fit. But this gives both communities a um, opportunity to literally double or even triple the community base overnight. With the merge, we become three times as big, two times as big, uh, over literally overnight. And I believe everybody in this space understands how valuable that is to be able to have an army as big as um, as big as you could get it. Let's be frank: the bigger you are, the the more powerful you are. And I believe together, as a community, um, as one, we with a like-minded community, we can actually make some pretty big dents in the space, and we can actually get our name uh, put put it high up there with some of these other big projects. So, I mean, that's, that's what I've got. 
as far as the proposal goes so far, this isn't, like I said, this isn't anything that's been fully reviewed by our legal team yet, which is something that needs to completely happen before we can make a finalized decision. There are still some, there's still some due diligence that we have to do on our part before we proceed with anything, uh, you know, uh, to, to be finalized. But we do know that there is an opportunity here. And in the short amount of time that we've had to think things through and come up with a plan, this is what we were able to come up with. And uh, like I said, we weighed out the, the pros, we weighed out the cons. And in our opinion, the, the pros outweigh the cons, but uh, our, you know, the rest of our due diligence will, will kind of uh, uncover more things if, if there is more things to uncover. And we still need uh, the full advice of our legal before moving forward. But we'd like to hear, you know, what you guys have to say about this and how you guys would feel about this and just, you know, any other questions that, that arise. But that's all I've got for right now. Um, Alex, Max, Peter, if you guys have anything you want to add on to before we start taking questions, um, let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, one thing I want to add, Leo, is above any any plan the main thing here is really you're getting a great team who's proven in the space who's ran the project at scale and built a successful community in the past that's where the value really comes so whether it's plan a plan b or whatever plan it is we're going to work together with the community to come up with the best plan and approach uh, and uh, the real thing here is really having a uh, a, a trustworthy and proven team come in and be able to move the project forward and progress. That's that's the main thing that needs to happen here or else no real decisions will be made, no real progress will be made. And that's, that's not gonna move the project forward at all. So like Leo said, we've had a few days to think this through. So we've came up with what we have in a few days, but before anything, before any decisions were made, we wanted to first present things to the community, get the take of the community, hear you guys out, answer any questions that you guys may have, because I'm sure you guys will ask some great questions that we're gonna need to also uh, talk through as well. Um, but the first thing we wanted to do before anything was bring this to the community and hear what you guys had to uh, say and what you guys think overall of the approach of us coming on board to help move you guys forward and help grow the project so that's that's the most important thing here i'm reading things that people are, are typing in the chat here now, one thing one thing's up to me i'm sorry before you continue drew um this one person says i didn't hear anything about making things right for people who have lost thousands overnight sooner than later. So that isn't our intention. Our intention is not to come in here and say, hey, we're going to make things better for people who lost money or people who are down on their investment overnight. That's not what we're saying. And that's not something that we can even, it's not in our power to do overnight. What we are saying we will do and continue to do is give the project the direction and the leadership that we know uh, can be beneficial to the future of the project. So um, we're not genies and we're not wizards with the snap of our fingers. We can't make things go crazy and turn them into billion dollar market caps. That's not what we do. That's not how things work. What we are, we're professionals. We know what we're doing. We know what it takes to run a community. We know what it takes to run a successful project. And we know what it takes to run successful businesses. Our proposal isn't to come in and say, hey, if you're down on your investment, we're going to make things right and turn things around for you. That is not something that we can promise. What we can promise is that we will give direction, leadership, and a, a structured plan on how to move things forward. Because in our eyes, it, it, the, the community is going to be left with, with nothing if, if there is no leadership. So that's, that's what you guys need to to kind of think through, not not think through, hey, uh, is Leo going to come in and turn uh, our market cap into a billion dollars overnight? Because that's not a realistic thing to think. Well, I Ooh, see you now. See you now. And, and I just want to throw this one at you, um, Max or Leo. Um, and 
you you said this earlier and I wanted to make it clear. You guys prefer yourselves um, to work with plan A. Is that correct? That we, is correct. We do. That's correct. Okay. Now keep in oh, mind, oh. I mean, we're, we're here in the, uh, what, the 72nd hour of having kind of put all this together. So there may be something entirely inspired by the community themselves that, that inspire an entirely different option. But with the time constraints that we did have trying to get this out here as fast as possible, this is what we put together. And frankly, we're pretty confident in, in, in the approach. I think it's, it's a very simple three-step three phased approach. And I think it's going to work and, and also preserves a lot of the guiding principles that, that Shinja was founded upon. So with that sort of keeping that same notion and that same narrative, I think would be advantageous for all involved. Right. Well, and, and then to go back to the, the prior uh, question that was being addressed, um, you know, people need to realize and, and, and do take this into consideration. Okay. Um, you're talking about wanting to recover what you lost and how are you going to recover what you lost? Uh, it, it's certainly going to happen um, a lot quicker when you've got a team that's established and that can come in and do things like provide liquidity, um, provide the money to be able to get the utility that that is worth getting back up and running now, up and running now. Um, if we were to go it alone, it, it's going to take some time. It's going to take months, possibly. So, um, you know, think this through thoughtfully is all I'm asking. Um, you know, I'm, I'm behind the community with what they want to do. I said that from the start, but I just want you guys to absorb all the possibilities, um, you know, and what it's going to take for each one of those possibilities, uh, you know, to be to come to fruition. Uh, and, and with that, if these guys are ready, we can um, ask people to start raising their hands and I'll go through and, and start picking people. Like I said, um, I want to make this clear. One question per person. We're not going to let one person hog up all the time. We've got 243 people in here and I know we've got a lot of questions to ask and we can't keep these guys here for three hours. So what we don't get answered, um, I will, you know, we'll arrange some short of. A questionnaire sheet um, so people can add to it and then send it over to the team. And with that, we're going to start with Sean and then Warriors Drum and then Cryptic Wishes. Those are going to be the first three. So go ahead, Sean. Gentlemen, um, good evening and, and welcome. Um, uh, the question I want to ask is if it, out of the utilities, um, which one, if you only had one to choose uh, to get back up and running, which one would that be? I can actually answer that question, uh, Sean. Frankly, we haven't had enough time to do our due diligence to look at the economics of the utilities, both on a cost versus benefit analysis. And I think it would to properly answer your question. And to be fair, it would be it would definitely take us some time to evaluate. I think there's an approach where the utilities are dissected, the core value is extracted from each of the utilities and perhaps put into a position where there could be a layer for mass adoption, meaning, you know, is this, you know, is this a project, is this a utility within a project? Because you're always going to have a smaller percent of the pie, a smaller percent of the market. But if a utility is solid, you know, there's an approach where it can become a real valuable business and therefore provide value back to the token as a whole. So that's to the best of my ability as of right now, without actually looking deeply into the tech, looking at the code, looking at, you know, where there's even looking at the metrics, you know, was there retention on some of these things, even if it was a small community, you know, was it operating smoothly? I'll tell you this though, we, there is a lot of technology built here and we come, you know, very various members from our our team are coming from a development and engineering background. So we're going to be able to look at it and parse out the the most crucial elements that can be integrated. 
And we're all right with doing that and making that investment. I hope that you. answers your question. All right, Warriors Drum, you will be next, sir. Go ahead. Hey, yeah, Sean kind of already he answered my first question, which thanks, Sean. <laughs> I guess my next question, my my question would be is this is once once you guys vet this out and you say hey let's go to option A right you said that if option A come becomes not not valid or or not not doable you would go to option B would that be before would you make that would you make that decision before you took over, or would that be after you took over? That makes well, sense. Well, well that, 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 we wouldn't know until after we took over if, if option A is feasible or not, right. um, unless during our due diligence process we uncover things that are like complete red flags that are like, okay, yeah, we can't, we can't move forward with it um, with option A. Which we haven't seen anything like that just yet, but we're still we're still doing our due diligence and we're still um, you know vetting everything. And like I said, we still have to talk through um, talk through our legal team before before we can make a finalized decision. But um, uh, one thing that I do strongly believe is uh, I, I don't think two options are enough. So what we're going to be doing, um, if you guys wish to proceed and kind of like hear us out and are open to, you know, becoming part of the Shiba Doji ecosystem is we, we would actually work on putting together a few more plans, a few more different ideas. Um, given the time, uh, we were only we were only able to come up with with two feasible ones that that were, you know, something that that are doable and, and we can um, present. But like I said, we, we definitely want to have some more options to be able to present to you guys over over the next, you know, uh, few days or weeks. All right. All right, good to go. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. For sure, bro. I think it's okay, also okay. just I wanted to add to that, Leo. It's just at the end of the day, we're coming in, and it's a turnaround. It's, it's a complete turnaround from where it is right now, and there's a lot of benefits and a lot of lot of uh, negatives, but we will come in, and we're going to be very transparent with, you know, where the negatives lie and where there's hope for a prospective future. So we're just going to put it out there as bluntly as possible, and our community is sure. can attest to the fact that that's how we operate. We 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 love just as much as we love to present good news. We're equally there and ready to dis to to discuss the bad news when it does happen. Sure. Yeah, I know you guys are solid. I I, I own Shiba Dodge, so I'm sorry, Shiba Doge. Um, yeah, so I know I know you guys are already solid. I'm just ask, asking that question. Appreciate it. Thank you for being a part of our community as well. Yes, sir. Okay, next is going to be uh, Cryptic Wishes, and then after Cryptic Wishes, we're um. Cryptic, it looks like your hand got tired. Put your hand back up. And then um, Crazy Man D, uh, you'll go after Cryptic Wishes. Okay, Wishes, go ahead, bud. Is, um, I want to know what is the sentiment in, in your community for for this takeover or merger with Shinji? We haven't had any negative sentiment in our community. Um, this is this was a surprise to our community as well, as well as it was to you guys. This was something that was uh, pretty much uh, decided upon pretty quickly on our end. So our community trusts us and our community knows that every decision that we make is for the community and for our projects. Uh, we've done a very, very good job of building that trust with our community and being able to um, have a transparent relationship with them. So the sentiment in our community is, I would say, uh, well perceived. They may have some questions, which we will go over with them, you know, during our AMA with them tomorrow. But I, I would say, at the end of the day, our community trusts us to um, do what's best for um, for our project. Yeah. 
All right. Crazy man D. Hey, thank you. Can you hear me? Just want to make sure my mic's coming through. Yeah, you're good. Uh, yeah, my, I really have a two-part question. Um, one, I know you say that you you prefer option A, but could you go over like what what do you see as the the real uh, benefit of going with option A versus a merger? Uh, like the pros and cons, uh, and then with if we did do a merger, then does, does do we also do you also include the assets owned like NFTs or is it just purely token based? So the main pro to keeping it as a standalone project is it's like, imagine Walmart buying out Target and then turning all the Targets into Walmarts. People are going to be like, hey, I don't like Walmart. I like Target. And they, they might not go back, right? But, you know, uh, there is already brand recognition with Shibnobi, whether it be good or bad, doesn't matter. The brand recognition is there. Um, the plans that Shibnobi had uh, as a project or something that people uh, believed in and something that people invested in based off of those beliefs. So we believe, you know, that there is something there in Shibnobi that people saw a light in and something that stood out to them. And we believe that, uh, you know, just having it as a standalone project is is a, is a strong move. It's like, why kill something that, that doesn't need to be uh, killed? So uh, that's why, you know, being able to revive it, try to revive it would be in our best interests. But in, in any event that we see like, Hey, no, it's not going to work. And we decide we want to merge then. Yeah. Obviously that combines all the community of both projects into one, uh, literally turns us into like, you know, 40, 50,000 plus holders at that point. Plus, you know, I don't know how many million over social media, but it just immediately makes us a a stronger force of nature overnight with with the click of a button and in in this space you know power is in numbers and that that's one of the the, the pros of the merge but the cons of the merge would also be you know people people would be like hey you know they'd have a bunch of questions even some people wouldn't understand what's going on some people would be like hey what had happened to my shinja tokens it would just be a plethora of questions from people who um, aren't listening into these AMAs or, or checking in once a month or once every few months and don't know what's going on. And then, you know, that there, there will be a certain level of FUD to deal with on that end. But I, I'm saying the merger is plan B, but in all reality, it's, it's probably going to end up being like a plan C or a plan D, considering we do want to have more, more options available, you know, here in the coming days. Okay, we're going to go in order here. Um, it's going to be THT first, and then Empowered, and then Scott. And I do have one um, question that I want to bring up that that was asked um, in in the chat, real quick. And it that question is: Do you guys have an idea yet of what the tokenomics might be? Um, you know, if Shinja was to remain standing alone. um that's not something that we talked about yet but um max if you have any idea on on that i, I believe that we wouldn't change it immediately until we kind of you know like i said think things through again for we've, we've only thought, thought it through for a short amount of time but you know adjusting the tokenomics isn't something that we talked about just yet okay all right tht go ahead with your question sir THT, I've unmuted you. All you got to do is hit the uh, mic button. Okay, empowered. Trina, go ahead, dear. Hi, guys. Um, someone already asked my question. I am already a part of your project. I just have been so wrapped up in a couple of others, one being Jim Noby. Um, so... I'm good, Drew. Thank you guys for being here. Um, okay, thank you. Scott, go ahead. You're unmuted. Hedgehog, you'll be next. How you doing, guys? Um, I got kicked once or twice, so I don't know if I missed something. 
I just wanted to see. So you mentioned like you guys taking over and possibly, you know, with plan A, injecting some liquidity into the pools and, you know, would you be in effect, uh, like the older technologies that are here, would you be in effect buying those? And then would they then be, I, I know you mentioned we'd be part of the, your ecosystem, but then would you own those things? And then also, I guess, you know, because it, right. if they in, are working properly and there's income coming in, you know, where does that go? In, I guess in, back in the market, event. Right. Yeah. No. So in the event of a takeover, we would, we wouldn't just take over like, Hey, leading the community, we, we would take over everything, right. Uh, the IP, the websites, the social medias, um, we would take ownership of the utilities, just like anything, um, Shifnobi related would pretty much cross over to, to new ownership in a sense, right. That, that includes, uh, you know, all the IP, uh, all of the social medias, the Telegram, the Discord, the Twitter, uh, the YouTube, whatever. Um, so we we would pretty much run it as if it were our project, and and pretty much it's kind of like like we look at it like like adopting a kid, right? You know, that's how it would be in in a sense. Right, and and that was my assumption. So I guess what what my actual question is is, you know, you said you guys would have to look at it and decide what that liquidity would be, what you would inject in effect an offer i would assume you know is that something we would discuss and approve and then also you had mentioned um you know if plan a doesn't work and you decide that you want to merge that you need to merge or want to merge instead like if we decide to go ahead um would we still be making these decisions going along like you know if you said okay we don't think a is working we want to merge would we still have the option of saying well we don't want to do that or once we decide to go ahead like it's kind of in your hand well, that's a good question. Um, kind of to answer like how we do things in our community is we, we do get the opinions and, and votes for you know, some of the major things that we do in our community from our community members. Um, but in, in certain scenarios, uh, we do believe that, you know, some of these hard decisions need to be made by people in a leadership role. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like giving people who don't really understand the full extent of a situation, the ability to control the outcome of that situation. Many people who are specialists in that in the industry or specialists in, in, in that scenario are not gonna make the right decision or they're gonna be making decisions based off of emotion rather to when we're making uh, decisions based off of a professional standpoint. So uh, that, that your question is to be determined. We don't know if it would come to a point where we're like, hey, you know what, we have to make the executive decision, like this is what needs to happen in order for for things to um, you, to be right. Uh, like I said, it's still it's still uh, up in the air, and that's why we want to be able to come up with you know at least two to three more options um, before defaulting to like it just a plan A and plan B. But that's why we do uh, understand that. Um, a plan A is a more effective strategy for the time being um, just because there is some uncertainty um, with, you know, some of those questions, especially that you asked. So <clears throat> what the, the, the facts of the matter are that the current dev is wanting to step away, is stepping away. Uh, fact of the matter is, is it, it, the, the, the project is going to fall into the hands of, of the community. Even though it's a great community, we understand what it takes to run a project of, of a successful magnitude. And it's not something that can be ran by just, you know, people who, who, who aren't a structured uh, entity and aren't people who can actually be on top of it the way that we can. So those are the facts of the matter. Um, and and those are those are what we can answer currently. But as, as far as like the, the determinations of like, are we going to take votes or this or that? We'd love to, but but we still need to fully analyze the situation to see if you know like those hard decisions, those executive decisions need to be made. Gotcha. Well, appreciate it. Like I said, I'm just kind of looking for a little clarity so everybody understands. Like, it's a great offer you guys are making. We really appreciate it. I'm sure everybody does. Um, you know, just trying to figure out if at some point, at what point would we would we be saying, okay, well, we're handing over the keys, we're in your hands, you know, is kind of what I was looking at. But I appreciate right. the answer. Thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, 
So Hedgehog. Hedgehog. Yeah, Hedgehog. And then uh, Shinjazuela. Um, one of our mods had a question. So Hedgehog and then Shinjazuela. <clears throat> yes. Uh, okay, well, thank you for this uh, panel. But, um, yeah, so my main question is, um, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> it's sort of an idea. Um, I do think we should go with plan A, you know, for a certain limited amount of time, let's say six months or so, and if it's not going well, we can reevaluate. But <clears throat> my main question would be <clears throat> that, uh, what will, let, oh yeah, if I am, let, let's pretend, if I am a top 100 holder in Shibnobi, will I be a top 100 holder in Shiba Doge? That's the main question that I have. And I don't, I don't know how this works, but I just want to know that. Yeah, it no, it wouldn't work that way. The way that it would work um, would be like, let's put it in a dollar perspective or an ETH perspective. If you own, if you own one ETH worth of of Shinja at the time of a uh, of a merge, if it were to merge with Shiba Doge, if you own one ETH worth of Shibnobi, you would in turn get one ETH worth of uh, of Shiba Doge. So you would pretty much convert your one ETH worth of Shibnobi to one ETH worth of Shiba Doge. That's how that would work. Um, it would be based off of the market cap and liquidity of, of Shibnobi based on the time of the merge. So so that's how that would work. You would, If you're a top 100 holder, uh, it wouldn't mean that you're going to be a top 100 holder in, in Shiba Doge. It might, it might if the numbers are similar and if the, the, the ETH values are the same, but uh, that's that's not how it would work. It would be it would be solely based off of a uh, ETH to to token ratio. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I, I will review the white paper for Shiba Doge. Um, you know, I do think we should go with uh, Plan A, but that's just me. And thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, it's not even like if we wanted to go with Plan B, it would be something that can happen immediately. Uh, I believe the the liquidity for the V2 of Shinja is locked until like September anyway. And in order to kind of um, merge the liquidities together into one, we have to actually wait for, for that liquidity to unlock so we can merge it anyway. So, so there will be a, there will be a trial, a time trial, you know, before that decision even has to be considered. Um, so the plan A would, would need to happen regardless of anything. Um, and, and I think, you know, the amount of time that the liquidity is locked would, would be more than enough uh, time for us to kind of figure out like, hey, is this plan A going to continue to work or, or do we have to start coming up with, you know, different different avenues? Yeah, and um, yeah, just to mention real quick, I know that uh, the liquidity for Shibnobi will be locked uh, approximately for the, for six months left, but thank you. Hey guys, at first I just want to say uh, thank you for being here and thank you for uh, taking us into consideration. Uh, one of my questions is uh, if, you know, if the community decides to go with the merge with you guys, um, are you guys are going to be the only team running Shignovi as a dev and community or you guys will be taking under consideration part of our dev team that would like to stay with uh, Chitnovi. I mean, working with Chitnovi as a community as well. Um, so, so we do have a very uh, large team, but obviously, with you know taking on a, a, a another project, we'd have to assign more people. Like, we do want to have a dedicated team towards it. So, what we will do is um, we we could definitely interview the current staff and. You know, interview um, and evaluate. You know what what type of talent is already onboarded, and if it fits our criteria and fits our needs, we wouldn't mind. Um, you know, onboarding those those the uh, current uh, developers or or team members onto um, onto the team. But uh, we do have a rigorous um, way of doing things, and we 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 like to make sure we dot our I's and cross our T's. Uh, all of our employees are, are people that, that we, you know, put through a, a, a rigorous interview and we make sure we're hiring, you know, the, the best talent that we can for whatever 
um, we're hiring them for. So that that's something that we have to talk through with, with the current team that's already on board. Uh, I don't see it being a problem with like Telegram moderators or um, people who are, you know, uh, moderating the chat. But as far as like developers and people who build things, um, that's something that we have to to get into and, and talk about because that's where that's where things get a little bit more complicated and, and you want to make sure that you have the right talent on board. Obviously, yeah, definitely. And like, I mean, we will like, I guess that will be an a, a extra question. So I, I would just give an opportunity to somebody else and maybe later on I might be able to jump in back. Thank you. Okay, Drake, 300. I love the name. So um, with this uh, current coin that we're currently in, we have two different um, servers that run through it. One, Ethereum, one BNB chain. Will this token also be on the BNB chain? Are you referring to, to Shibnobi or are you referring to Shiba Doge? Kind of like in the sense, like we're we're both on BNC and Ethereum. Some choose BNC, some choose Ethereum. But your token, if this miraculous merge does happen, um, is this going to just be strictly on Ethereum or BNC? So, currently, we're working on a a BSC and cross um, train bridge for our project as well, which is pretty much a lot different than what people have seen in the space so far. Um, which is the reason why we haven't done a conventional bridge as you know some other projects have done is because it's in a sense not even really considered to be a, a true bridge. It's just another deployment on another another chain and and then they just stabilize the price to, to one another. Um, but we're working on a different technology that is a true bridge, um, which is something that is not an easy thing to build and it's something that we're working on. so, Eventually, in due time, yeah, we do want to introduce Shiba Doge to different chains, but currently it's just on ETH. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I don't see any hands up. Um, if you've got a question, come on up. Mr. T, there you go. I knew I saw your hand earlier. All right, Mr. T. Um, You'll go first, and then, and then Antoine, you'll go after Mr. T, and then THT. Uh, go ahead, sir. Firstly, firstly, I want to say thank you uh, for myself, to, uh, you know, all the team, all the community holders. Uh, really nice to hear, um, you know, some real professionals uh, speaking that have got this experience. Sounds great to me that um, as a holder. Option A sounds great, to be honest. It really does. Um, I understand the risks that go with everything. Um, however, my thoughts, and I, I just, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to ask, but have uh, you guys had a conversation with a uh, Mr. CF as of yet at all, please? And if so, what was the outcome of that? Mm, I don't believe we've had any conversations with that individual unless max alex if you guys have talked to him but but no i don't i, I personally yeah. haven't yeah. okay well uh thank you very much appreciate it and uh yeah keep up the good work wait I'm, uh, cf are you are you referring to referring yeah to Cliff? 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 talking yeah yes, so, yes, so, yes. yes. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i think yeah, uh yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why we're that's why we're here. And as yeah, far as okay, our great. understanding, as far as our understanding, this um, it is entirely in the hands of the community to decide how the how all of us proceed. That was the major takeaway. Great. I mean, that sounds really good. You know, look, I, I do have a vested interest in uh, the success of Shibnobi. I'm, you know, I've got quite a large bag, one of the top holders. Um, and I, I just want to see the um, the project in the in the right hands and uh, it going in the right direction. You know, the vision for the project is amazing. I'm an early investor. 
Um, I work in tech. I, you know, I'm a senior recruiter for a global tech company. So I understand what good tech talent looks like, or I like to think I do. Um, and you guys sound like you're, you know, running a pretty tight ship. So, and so that kind of involvement with the um, Shibnovi project and community would be awesome. So I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing what you guys do with this space. And yeah, good to have you on board if, if so, but thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah, and just to be clear, um, when speaking to uh, Cliff, he made it clear that he wants to the, the community to make the decision. So ultimately, it's up to you guys. This is the community-run project. This, this project is nothing without the community, regardless of whether we're here or not. As developers, without the community, it's nothing. So we're here as supporters of the community to, to present some plans and present things that we think will work based off what we've done in the past and made successful in the past. And at the end of the day, it's our job to service you guys. So if you feel like we're the right people, we're the right team, or we have the right direction of ideas, at the end of the day, you guys make the decision if, if you want us to be a part of that. So we're here trying to help out in any way we can. And hopefully there's a way where we can, uh, in a meaningful way, help the help help you guys out. Um, it it's it, it'd be very unfortunate for for the project to not reach the potential that we believe it can. We we believe it can be tremendously successful, especially with the backing of you guys. And we're here to be at service and do what we have to do to to turn the ship around. Okay, Antoine, uh, go ahead. Um, you guys obviously you guys obviously have not reviewed the back end details of Shibnobi. Are your offers contingent on further back end due diligence? Well, yeah, one hundred percent. Our our offers are still contingent on us. Um, uh, completing our due diligence and vetting everything else and having legal approve it. Uh, like I said, that there was a very short amount of time for us to, to, to come on and kind of like, you know, make these decisions, but, but there is a process, you know, we, we will never go into something blind. Um, no matter how, how good or bad it seems, we'll, we'll always make sure to do our due diligence. We take our time with our decisions, but um, we, we have legal doing a full review and, um, we, we are going to have to have a follow-up conversation um, with with uh, the people who currently own Shibnobi and ask them some of the, the questions that, that legal uh, has pretty much advised us to ask and, you know, possibly even um, have some of our core developers do some uh, more, more DD on the back end of the contracts and some of the other things. So, um, yeah, for sure, I would say a lot of what we presented is contingent on uh, everything checking out. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. The, the way that the phases is the way that it's going to be rolled out is as of right now, we're in the intent phase. We made a, a sort of formal but non-binding offer, a letter of intent. From this point forward, the next step is to bring it and introduce the idea and concept to the community, get the approval by the community to do so. At that point in time would be when the due diligence starts, you know, really getting involved that's engineering that's uh, legal etc and then shortly thereafter once everything is drawn up and and all things check the boxes that would be a pretty fast process from that point forward yeah i you know i wanted to add to that um you know these guys came forward with a good faith offer and um they're businessmen and they understand what they're walking into they understand what due diligence is. And um, that was, you know, that that was all part of the initial discussion um, of the offer. And it, they made it clear that they want to look at everything. So, um, you know, while we're making a decision as a community, they can they can, you know, meet with Cliff and and start working through some of those details. So things happen sort of in, in unison. Um, 
you know, it gives them time to do that while the while the community's making their mind up. And that's why I wasn't going to bring the vote up tonight. I'm waiting 24 hours because I want everybody to absorb this. I want them to thoughtfully think it out. I want them to go back and listen to this AMA. Um, and with that, we're going to go THT. I unmuted you. You're going to be next. Um, and uh, and then Aquaism. I am here now. And then Crypto Mama Faith. I'm unmuting all of you and you will go in that order, please. THT. Hello. Yeah, go ahead, bud. Well done. Uh, what I want to ask is that uh, we stake our token a few months ago on uh, Bus Tech and we earn uh, Credit Plus. Yeah, so. so um, THT, you can, after the AMA, you can reach out to me um, um, and, and I'll help you with that um, okay. as far as the verse stake. And that's a utility that we're going to have to bring back up because the server has been brought down for right now. And oh. we do intend on bringing that back up so we can get you guys on stake. And Leo um, and Max and, and Alex, just so you guys understand, um, we did have people that, um, when they when we were doing the migration from V1 to V2, um, they had an opportunity to stake their V1 tokens to earn credits in the Shinobi verse. And um, because the server's down, they're not able to unstake and claim their V2. So that is something that we would need to, um, you know, and and I'll I'll be more than happy to provide all that information as was uh, as will uh, Cliff and Teddy. So. Um, any guidance that can be given there by us, it, it's there 100%. All right. Thank you. Okay. Aquaism, go ahead, buddy. Hello. Hi. All right. Um, I'm just tuning on, tuning in. I've been at work. So, but, uh, and the question might have already been answered. But with the utilities that Shinobi had, which seemed like it was a, you know, seemed like it was quite a bit. You know, Will, do you think you might be able to incorporate the utilities from there to what you're doing? And I remember earlier I was on, I think it was Ruth saying that Shiba Doge was not looking to do utilities that are already done. For example, a bridge, which I understand that. You already got, you know, you already got a couple of bridges that are out there that are really popular. Uh, um, do you think you might be able to use some utilities that we have already developed and bring it into your into your verse, you know, and bring that there? Yeah, surely. I mean, it, it, just, just to be clear, you know, we won't throw anything away. A anything that we can find value in and that we can find it to be useful to uh, the ecosystem, we'll keep it intact. And um, if that means us having to make some adjustments and having to make some upgrades or make some changes to some of the utilities or just leave them the way they are, that's still something that we have to look into each utility uh, individually and kind of like assess that, um, which we haven't done yet. We haven't had the time to do that yet. Uh, but yeah, we're not we're not saying like, hey, we're going to come in and just like turn everything off. And, and that's not what we're saying. But what we are saying is we don't want to dilute the... Um, dilute the project with with things that are that we find useless right uh which i'm not saying anything is because we still have to look into it but uh we believe like anything of value and anything that people are um, going to be using uh we'll, we'll definitely keep that around you know maybe just revamp it and upgrade stuff but but yeah we won't we won't throw anything away okay well, they're, they're real quick so like um uh, roof was saying earlier that that your your main plan was to do things that are different than you know than other projects you're doing. For example, I guess some are doing uh, swaps, some are doing this, but you didn't want to do anything that's kind of common what everybody else is doing. Do you, what is the one thing that you guys are looking to probably do that's kind of different than what else is, others are doing? 
I mean, if you don't mind me asking, I mean, I'm just like, well, no, no, that's a, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Well, well, we, we like to approach things in a non-conventional way. And we like to think outside of the box with, with the things that we do. We'll take it. We'll definitely take a lot of inspiration from things that are already out. And we'll think about uh, ways on how we can make it better and how we can um, kind of, uh, you know, reimagine the wheel per se. Because I believe, like, we believe that that's the only way to actually get ahead of the curve is to, to come out with things that aren't already in circulation. And that's what makes you unique. And that's what we, we, we've we done when, with, you know, the past nine months. We were working on a, a pretty elaborate uh, NFT project and ecosystem and uh, pretty much storyline. Uh, I don't want to say metaverse because that's not what it is, but... Uh, we're introducing a whole new ecosystem into the space that that wasn't there before and um you know changes the way that people are going to be interacting with with nfts in the future so we believe like you know it may not be that idea that turns this thing into like the next top 10 project in the world but it's going to be ideas like that and it's going to take i think uh, it's going to take minds that are thinking outside of the box and coming out with ideas like that that will take um, you know, certain projects to to extraordinary heights. And I'm not going to get into detail of some of the ideas that we've been in, uh, uh, that we have in consideration or we have in the works. But what I can say is not, nothing that we release is is just like a, a carbon copy of something that already exists. It, it may be something that um, will, is inspired by another uh, product that's in circulation, but we we always like to to reimagine things and and uh, create them in ways that we find to be more unique, more beneficial, and and in a way game changing because uh, we like to kind of introduce new products to to the space. Yeah, Lee, I'll jump in and and just say that a lot of the products that we create are sort of I want to say more narrow and focused than a lot of other projects and tokens that they that that are producing utilities. See. A lot of these meme coins, in a sense, they tend to build a community and then they say, oh, crap, now we got to build something of value. And, and most of the time that's in the tech, tech space, right? You're thinking about a utility like a swap, a bridge, an exchange, et cetera. And the problem with that is unless you're a strict and targeted tech company where that is your main focus and that's what your users are there for, you can't really build, or you can, but it's going to be difficult in an uphill battle to build mainstream adoption of those products. So we tend to try to stay really within the lines. If you think of like a bowling alley, we, we like to have the guardrails up so that we can always hit the pin. And we look at this space as, ha as being an opportune, especially when it comes to memes and coins in this industry. There's a really big opportunity to be an IP, a franchise, uh, something where the actual content itself is a product, and then that can be owned by the token holders. So one of the big things that are coming out this month is going to be the first ever equipable dynamic NFT, where essentially you're going to be able to equip and unequip individual items. Because we looked at the NFT space and we said, look, it's not going to progress any further. It's not going to get any better if everyone is just making static JPEGs that have no purpose, no utility. And so we said, well, if you can, if we're going to progress down this road of building, you know, an IP, a franchise that, that, that can be used and enjoyed by multiple millions of people, you know, this has to be a dynamic environment where things can change and you can customize things. If you look at where the NFT space and most of the money is actually going, it's really in that gaming sector. It's in that media sector, content, entertainment. So we think if we keep a laser focus on that and we bridge the gap there and, and basically be an unparalleled project in the Web3 space, but using some of the same philosophies of the big, big behemoth companies out there where the, where the content is the product, you think essentially you can be a Web3 Marvel, you can be a Web3 Disney. And that's a big opportunity that's going to reap a lot of rewards down the road as you build that ma mainstream adoption. Okay, thank you. All right, I am here now. Go ahead. Hey, good evening, guys. Um, I just want to thank you guys for responding to my message in the chat earlier. I don't want you guys to think I'm like badgering or trying to belittle you guys or anything like that. I just 
was thinking from somebody who may have lost thousands. And just to me, it just seemed like trying to to make something else without at least attempting to make right by them first just seemed kind of off to me. And I would assume that that's how most people would feel who have lost a lot. But that wasn't my question. My question was, um, in the event that you guys decide not to take on this project, would there be some sort of discord or some sort of announcement or some something in writing that we can read up on in regards to why you guys decided not to in detail? I mean, we're going to be as transparent as we can to the extent that our confidentiality from a legal standpoint would not be broken. Um, we're not going to be putting anyone on blast. You know, I'm not, we're not going to do, you know, I, I, we don't, we're not going to go into this with the assumptions that it's not going to happen. And yes, we will be transparent. Like I said, to the extent that our legal limitation allows us to be, but uh, we'll be very clear should that happen. Although we're hopeful that that's not the case. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Crypto mama faith. Um, you're next. Hi, sorry. Uh, I did just join that just got off work too. So if this has been discussed, I don't have a problem going back and, uh, when I listen to the recording, but I'm just curious as far as the transparency, as far as the money that you guys spend within your project, what type of transparency of what's being spent, what the money's being spent on is, do you guys share with your community? And then my second question is, is Cliff being compensated as a part of this deal? Well, I can answer the second one first. Um, I'm not at liberty to discuss financial matters at this moment, but what I can say is that the general consensus thus far has been that all monies should be directed at increasing the value of the project and also uh, you know, validating the community and empowering the community. There hasn't been you know, a, a series of conversations where there's been any sort of uh, personal gain that has not been a part of our conversations. And I don't anticipate that to be the case because of every, every, all the details that have been discussed up until this point have really been really about the community. So that's, I hope that answers question number two. In terms of question number one, uh, to the extent that we are able to, I mean, everything on the blockchain is always public. It's always preserved. There's no ways to get around it, ifs, ands, or buts. We run a company here. It is, it is treated as a company. And so that comes with payroll. And there are some certain confidentialities and, and, and privacy with related to that. But in terms of you know, financial disclosure, we do have plans and, and we do anticipate doing a financial transparency report in the coming months. And, you know, just to showcase to the people like, hey, this is, you know, here we are with 20 plus people strong and this is what it looks like to run this company. But for the sake of competition, for the sake of not letting too many of uh, too many people within the industry have, ex you know, really deep insight into our project and, and our and our business dealings and what we're trying to build. You know, we have to be very cautious and on a fine line with that. I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. Thank you so much. Okay, Shibnokrat, you're next, sir. Yeah, so my uh, comment or question centers around uh, the community of Shibnobi. Um I don't know how um, if uh, the the team that's making the presentation understand and appreciate the, uh, the unity behind this community. And the fact that this community has an identity and if that identity is bridged, I fear that the community might uh, fall apart. And what is um, uh, concerning a little bit would be if option B goes along, that might lead to the community being fractured. And it's my opinion, I don't know for sure, but it's based on the strength and the identity of this community. And I would like to hear their take on this. 
Yeah, no, we definitely recognize that that you know it, each and every community has an identity and has something that it's been built off of and something that they they are like minded in. Um, <clears throat> but what what I can tell you is our our community is. Uh, probably one of the best, if not the best community out in the crypto space. And when I say that, I mean it. I'm not just saying that because it's our community. I'm saying that because we are one of the most positive uh, communities out there in the space. We are one of the most helpful. We are one of the most um, educated. And that isn't something that happened overnight. That's something that, that we curated. And that's something that we wanted to achieve out of our community over the past um, you, you know year and uh, a couple of months. But um i don't know what your guys's community entails but i don't think it's going to be broken in a sense of it being merged with the shiba doge community as far as like joining the shiba doge ecosystem i think it will strengthen it and i think it will give it more of a backbone and more of a uh, support system something that it doesn't have currently um I, I would see the community falling apart a lot worse without leadership and without a a backing community of, of uh, like-minded people of um, you know Web three investors or, or people who are just interested in crypto and um, technology in in general. Uh, I, I think it, it would be a worse outcome to kind of just like not have that rather than to have it. Um, and I, when we made when we saw what was going on with Shibnobi, one of the first things that crossed our mind was like, hey this community is going to fall apart. And it's such a shame to see the community fall apart because it was such a strong community. That's the number one driving reason why we even considered to come in and make a, like Cliff didn't come to us saying like, hey, can you come take Shibnobi off of our hands? That is not the case. We saw the situation and we decided, hey, let's, it's a shame to see the community fall apart and we can actually, um, you know, we're all about unity and we're all about making Web3 a better place for everyone which is, you know, that was the main reason that kind of like drove us into um, starting to brainstorm some ideas as to how we can make this uh, um, something that's beneficial to both communities. So uh, I don't see it being a bad thing. I see it being a, a good thing for, for the Shinja community to join forces with Shiba Doge. Okay, um, now I know we've got some mods that probably have some questions and they're not able to raise their hands. So mods, if you'll, um, one at a time, if you wanna um, ask some questions, feel free. Anybody else in the audience that's muted, um, please, you know, if you've got a question, raise your hand. Um, we're, we're coming up on an hour and a half and, uh, you know, I know these guys have some other things to take care of. Um, Dreams, I see you said call you up, so come on up. Thanks, Lars. Hey, guys. How's it going? Um, hey. Question on my mind is, um, not saying that I, I haven't followed Shiba Doge closely. I've invested in the past. I'm not currently invested, but uh, I, I hear good things. Uh, main question for me is what seemed to happen kind of in Shibnobi was a lot of FUD got thrown at the, uh, at the dub. And he was uh, basically unable to defend against it and come up and uh, an answer against it and wouldn't explain. Uh, where I don't know if there's been any cases where you guys have dealt with. Um, and it's a bit, it's a bit of a two part question too because a lot of those questions were uh, the deployer wallet and transactions coming out of the deployer wallet. So who would exactly be in charge of the deployer wallet? Would it be one of you guys, two of you guys? Uh, who, how would that work? And then if there is any ever, ever uh, questions or FUD. And we ask you in one of the AMAs, is there any problem just, uh, you know, giving explanation and uh, defending against fun? Because that's the big thing that kind of happened here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah definitely, man. So uh, defending against fun and actually having answers for everything that happens is something that we're fully transparent on. And we've never had any issues answering any of the hard questions. That's why um, we were able to build such a strong trust and such a strong relationship with our community and with the people involved in our project um we've dealt with our just like anyone else um and at, at some points uh it's gotten um to to like organized fun and we were still able to shut it down because we had an answer for every single question and um we we never we never personally put ourselves in situations where we're not going to be able to 
get ourselves out of it. We Everything that we do, we do it with an honest heart and we do it with an honest mind to know that we can kind of better the, the, the space rather than damage it further. Um, we want to build a good reputation for this, the space. So, I mean, we, we have nothing to gain out of it financially. Uh, well, obviously there are, there is things to gain financially, but that's not our intention. Our intention is to build a legacy and our intention is to build a um, pretty much a, a kingdom, let's say, of, of success in, in Web3. So that's the answer to that part of the question. Um, the second part of your question, um, I don't know exactly the whole situation of what went down here in Shibnovi. I have a broad idea, um, but it's really not my place to talk about it right now. Maybe it's something we could talk about in the future, but but as of right now, it's not my space, uh, my place to talk about it. But um, the deployer wallets, marketing wallets and stuff that are controlled by Shipnobi, if we were to take over, um, they would be transferred over to our team, which would be put on a multi-sig and it would be controlled by the core team of Shiba Doge. Thanks, Leo. That's a great answer, man. I appreciate you. Sounds good to me. Appreciate it, man. No problem. Okay, Eddie Turner. Um, this is, guys, just in case Eddie gets excited, um, be ready to... Uh, <laughs> hold your phones back a little bit because he uh he, he's our resident uh uh motivator but eddie come on up <laughs> yes sir yes sir oh yeah oh yeah hallelujah yes sir i'm in the house i'm in the house Question. I got a question. Ooh. Feels good. Yeah, dude. Feels good. The question is how would this affect the centralized exchanges that spend their gone like Big Mark and et cetera, et cetera? Uh, that's still that's still in the woodwork, man. That's still something that we have to look into, and that's still something that that um, we don't have the answers to. So that that's still a big question um, on the whiteboard that needs to be answered. Um, but yeah, that's definitely something we're gonna have to find out before proceeding. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mister Leo. Leo, uh, I need no. for you to sign me out. Sign me out, Mister Leo. He wants him to Signing give me a hallelujah. All right, hallelujah, bro. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. You have to work on that one, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're backing out of this deal. Uh, it's been nice. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. Yeah, uh, like I, I said, he he's our he's our our uh he's our spiritual guy here and uh ag come on up i know you've got a question hi sorry uh first of all uh, um, i'm one of the guy who are foreigner so i'm not american uh, I, mean, I mean not everybody can be correct i'm not american I'm italian and i've been here since the beginning i'm one of the top uh, 20 holders so all of you are here for one reason, to make money. You are not here for charity, I do believe, because otherwise you are not going to be here. So my question is, uh, somebody, I, I arrived late, so I don't know what is A, B, C, or D, and I will uh, go back and, and uh, listen to the recording, definitely. So my question is, uh, as uh, top holders lost uh, quite a bit uh, amount of money, um, what, uh, what, I will do as I have uh, coined uh, in uh, the two chain. And uh, I would like to know, uh, as I say, I believe somebody already answered, if I'm the top 20 or top 100, and once you do the merger, uh, uh, what I will be? I will be uh, in my SHIB, uh, Dodge, uh, Shinja, whatever is gonna be the name, I, I don't know. Uh, still one of the top older, when you transfer the coin, or I will just be a kind of uh, eat value, 
or, or, or what? So, because, you know, many of us, I believe we worry about uh, you coming in, your restructure, and uh, we will be just uh, uh, another coin as we did one merge with another one and uh, our value will decrease. So if I have invest $400,000 and now I have $22,000 in my pocket, uh, what uh, you can do for us, because uh, to vote you as a president or whatever, you have to do something for me, not just uh, you know decrease my value and merge and I have, I'll be nobody. And the second question right. is, uh, as a community, we are strong because we believe in the project and we are all together, we stick together, we laugh together, we have 24 hours, uh, I mean, not a man or more, but we stick together and we, we, we help each other. So is your community allowed us to, to do and uh, enjoy what we are doing here? Because you are not just buying a coin, you are buying us. You, you, are, you are us and we are you. So uh, is something... Uh, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, so, to? Uh, sorry, yeah, the, of last course. One, uh, the last one, uh, your community, I mean, you as a leader, you're going to be like Zorro with a mask or as we have preached all the time, we will know who you are. Thank you. Gotcha. So I'll, I'll answer your questions in reverse order. Um, I am not doxxed and I, I don't have plans of doxing, which we'll talk about on, on a different AMA. Um, our community already knows the reasons why, and um, this has been a topic of discussion for, for many months, but we'll talk about that on a different AMA. So yeah, consider me like Zorro in a mask, if that's how you want to. Um, your, the second, uh, your second question, we wouldn't entertain merging communities if we didn't find a similarity in, in communities. So we believe that um, the, the community here is like-minded to the community that we have. Um, our community is fully positive. Uh, our community is uh, committed. Our community is all about uh, unity. And our community is probably one of the best places to be in Web3 currently. So I, I believe all of the things that you like about your community are are much more amplified and um, much brighter in, in our community, not, not to throw any shade or anything like that, but um, I, I do believe that you'll be uh, completely pleased with the people that you meet and interact with in, in, in our communities, and you'll find yourself in a much better spot than you've ever been um, mentally with you know the people that you deal with, um, because they're just uh, you know educated, happy, and uh, calm and collected and they know how to kind of maneuver in the space of Web3. So it's refreshing to, to not see um, all the craziness that goes on with people who don't know anything about anything. We've done a very good job with educating people over the past year and we pride ourselves in doing that and our community prides themselves in doing that as well. Um, and for your first question, of the the ratios at the time of a merge if a merge would happen it wouldn't be like hey if you're the top five holder you'd automatically become the top five holder in shiba doge that's not how it would work it would work on a per eth basis so like if your shiba Do if your shinja is worth five eth at the current time then you would pretty much get five eth worth of shiva doge if uh conversion were to happen so it would be on a uh, per eth basis at the time of merge um reliant on what the total liquidity and market cap of shinja is if that were to even happen okay so i understood because uh, what happened is uh, uh, if somebody had invested 400 or half million uh, at that time and he had uh, let's say 100 coins when you do the merge, if I correct me if I'm wrong, you and now my value is only 20 hit instead of 500 hit, my value will be uh, at 20 hit now. So whatever was before is gone. So I will have to wear, wait and work for my 20 hit to become again 400 hit or whatever, something like this, right? In a sense, uh, it's not that the value is gone. It would just be merged with the the project uh, that we currently have going on, which I think is a better scenario than than having no option at all and kind of just leaving the renouncing the contract and having it under no ownership and no leadership and you know eventually dwindling down to 
to to nothing, you know, if, if that if that were the case. So, but actually, I, it's not correct. Actually, it's not correct. We, we do have other option that uh, is in the plate. So that's just uh, for us to. No, no, no. I'm not saying that there isn't other options. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, like, if there were no other option, and the other option were to kind of just renounce and not leave it uh, with any leadership, then you know, then obviously that Plan B is a much better option than than no option. Yeah, I, I, I do understand your uh, your uh, where you come from, but I don't like the word uh, counter re uh, renounce because we never heard about this counter will be renounced. So that, that was only my uh, my thing. We don't like to use the word the counter renounce because we don't. Um, uh, for what we know, there is no counter to be renounced. There is just a, a new as a company, which I believe you're very professional, and I hope uh, you grow my back. So the only problem. The only issue I have here is uh, I hope uh, if we merge, you grow my bag, the break of all my brothers, sister, elders, because that's what we want. Leadership is very important. And as you know, leadership, we need a leader. And uh, if you are the right person and you, you, you retreat back whatever we all have lost, you most welcome. But we don't want to talk about renouncing contract because we are not in a position to say you are coming as a saver. Because nobody's renouncing the contract, what I understand. If that is the case, is change, and it's the only option. Definitely, we have to go with you. But as I never heard about saying renouncing the contract, that's all. So thank you very much, and good luck. Whatever we will decide. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a quick question, if uh, I can um, ask, um, Drew. Yeah, go ahead, Phoenix. Okay, uh, it's about the plan A. It's, uh, I mean, what, what's your benefits for the plan A? I mean, financial benefits. I mean, the, the, the financial benefits aren't, the, they don't outweigh the, the, the benefits that we get from actually onboarding. So like the main benefit that we get out of this, out of, out of acquiring pretty much the entire IP and community and, and everything else is we grow both communities overnight to pretty much double the amount that it is right now. That's, that's the, the biggest benefit, right? We've, we've, uh, it's no secret that we're not financially motivated um, by, by our projects. Obviously, yes, money is nice and it's nice to get it, but um, we're trying to build something here. And the way that I see this benefiting us, if we're just looking at it from, our perspective is literally uh, doubling or tripling the community, the number overnight. And we understand how, uh, how important that is in the space of growth. Now, some people might not see the value in that the same way that we see it, but we do understand that anything that we lay our hands on, we take very seriously and we treat like, as if it were, uh, our, 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 um, our baby let's say so that's the benefit that we get the benefit that we get is onboarding a bunch of great like-minded people growing our community doubling it doubling your community in the process of it and also kind of putting the project under a new liter leadership because uh, look at the sentiment that it's in right now it's not in a good place and i mean correct me if i'm wrong but you know if, if better options arise for you guys by all means you know we're not forcing anyone to do anything we're here kind of just just pitching this and we we want to see what type of sentiment you guys get out of it because we don't want to bring people on board that don't want to be there to begin with we want you guys to want it too because if you don't then we're not trying to force anyone to do anything and we'll just continue operations as usual and, and continue growing our community as we're as we're um uh, planning to do and and currently even currently doing so so that that's the main thing man we don't get a financial benefit yeah there's the the, the taxes but the taxes that are going to be coming in are always going to be going back into supporting the project because we're not we're not trying to dig into our own pockets to 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 keep funding uh, the operation right like it needs to be able to sustain and support itself and obviously the marketing and the development that happens needs to be happening in such a strategic way where it's going to be 
generating that type of income so that the projects can have self-sustainability and be able to survive, which is why uh, Shiba Doge has prospered and done so well in the, belt, uh, in the bear market is because it has uh, that sustainability and it has the functions to continue to support itself even through a bear market. And we just, you know, we like to look at things from a pr uh, business perspective when we're running this operation and running any operation. And we don't like to look at things just in like a one week or one month point of view. We look at it in a two to four year uh, perspective. And, you know, that always makes it so that we make the right decisions and we don't make any decision that kind of, uh, you know, dies out very quickly. So everything that we do is strategic, man. Okay, thank you, buddy. That's All right, so we've got, We've got two people that have not asked a question. Those are going to be the last two questions of the night. We've had these guys in here for an hour and 45 minutes. Um, and gentlemen, I appreciate your time. FX22, you're going to go first. And then Adrian Dominguez, you will go second. Hello, uh, thanks. Thank you. Uh, I'm excited about uh, this AMA and everything that's uh, taking place. Uh, but what, the question I had was, if we decide on option A, um, how soon will um, you inject the liquidity? Well, like I said, everything still has to be uh, checked off on our due diligence part and our legal needs to approve everything. Um, I don't know exactly how many days or weeks that would take, but we'd give you guys a um more clear answer depending on on what you guys decide um so i i can't i can't fully answer that right now because it's still contingent on on legal finishing its process and us finishing our due diligence okay thank you okay adrian go ahead hey guys how you doing good how are you i'm good i'm good um just a quick uh, question here. Um, I've been a holder since day one, never sold, just, you know, kind of went along for the ride. Uh, as far as all the utilities and everything that was built already, uh, according uh, to, to, you know, Cliff, millions were spent on developing and whatnot. In case you guys take over and you just say, uh, hey, this utility is, is kind of useless for us, but hey, maybe this, uh, this up and coming project uh, is looking to, to, to build something like that, would that be something you guys could uh, sell or transfer over to them? Just, just so it doesn't become old technology or useless technology to us? Possibly. I mean, that, that would still uh, entail us having to look through everything and kind of identifying what's there and what, um, you know, can be salvaged if we were to want to stop using that certain utility. Um, but like I said, we're not trying to throw anything away. Like anything that's built and already there will either try to make it better or uh completely just revamp it and, and make it different than what it currently is but if we do find it to be completely useless and and, and um non-relevant to, to the vision then then we'll start thinking of different options of what to do with it but yeah we're open to, to you know outsourcing it and, and selling it off if that's 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 what needs to be done but we just don't know yet because we haven't even looked into them yeah, well, yeah, you know, maybe they're they're looking to the new company or an up and coming project is looking to build, and since we already spent the millions and the time, you know, it might be hey, we, we have this here, you guys can have it for X amount of dollars, and uh, hey, community, here's a buyback and burn of 500k or whatever the number may be. Yeah, that's actually an option on the table. We were looking at bringing various different revenue vehicles to the project. And uh, one of them could very well be an entire licensing strategy, where if the technology is sound and, and it works in a white labeled fashion, we can white label it, spin it out as its own thing. And that revenue can be a very meaningful part of the buyback and burn strategy. But really, it's, 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 it's early to tell. But those are all things on the table. And frankly, those are great ideas. Great. Um, good talking to you guys. Uh, I'm about to uh, transfer some ETH and, uh, you know, drop it in here right now. All right. Well, um, I, I know we've got a couple people that have their hands up. Guys, we'll, like I said, we'll um, take some uh, 
we'll get a sheet together of a, a, a Google Doc and we'll allow people to submit questions um, and we'll pass it on to the uh, Sheba Doge team. But, you know, they've been in here almost an hour and 50 minutes. I'm going to let them make any closing statements they want to make. Gentlemen, I'm, I just want to, you know, say we appreciate the time that you've spent um, and the thoughtfulness that's gone into this presentation. And, you know, we can now go back and absorb it, um, you know, think about it debate it amongst ourselves and then, you know, move on to uh, seeing what the community wants to do. But we, we definitely appreciate what, what you did. Thank you. Agreed, man. No, um, no problem. Thank you guys for having us. Thank you guys for listening in and uh, thank you for your consideration. Uh, I really don't have any closing statements. Uh, I pretty much said everything that, that I wanted to say and presented everything that we wanted to present. Um, my final thing would say would be just to thank you guys again for, for your time and, and um, you know, having us here. So uh, Alex, Max, if you guys have anything you want to sign off with. No, just thank you for your time and hearing us out. Uh, we appreciate you guys having us here and, uh, just a reminder that we're here to work with you guys to figure out a solution. So if you guys have any questions at all, our DMs are open. Feel free to send over any questions, suggestions, or anything, and we'll get back to you guys. But uh, we look forward to hearing more of what you guys think. And thank you to everyone for spending some time with us. Oh, real quick, real you quick. guys, uh, and thank you for the time to present this today. Uh, we're we're very in tune at this moment in time, and if anyone has ideas as alternatives or viable options that you see, we were we are more than happy to hear them, uh, think them through, evaluate it, and we look forward to a potential united front. I would I would strongly recommend, and I'm sure Drew is going to say this, but definitely take the time to really think this through, and also do your due diligence on our project. That means check out the white paper, check out our website, our dashboards see how everything is being built, you know, look at the NFTs, go and just, I mean, immerse yourself into the world of Shiba Doge, take the time to do that, because that should be a big part of your consideration as well, because, you know, the, there is always a path for you guys on your own. But, you know, maybe after you guys take a look, and you see everything that's going on in the Shiba Doge world, you guys may say, this is this is where you want to be. And this is the home you want to find. Absolutely. And Alex, you guys are doing a um, an AMA tomorrow over in your Telegram, correct? Yes. 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 OK, what what time does that take place? Um, we do our AMAs every Monday and every Thursday at 3 p.m. PST. OK, so 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right. So anybody here, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure this will be talked about over there tomorrow. So um, if you want to go in and, and maybe get some more information possibly or um, whatever, you feel free to, to join their telegram and, and join in. Um, I want everybody, th th this is why I said I would not open the voting immediately because I want everybody to, you know, stop and think about it. When we did this, this same thing after, um, you know, the proverbial poop hit the fan three days ago. Um, you know, we were all taken back. We were deflated. We woke up the next morning and a lot of us had a different attitude. We had a fight attitude. We had a, we're going to do this. We're going to figure this out. And, um, you know, time allows you to, uh, absorb things and contemplate them and look at the pluses and minuses. And I don't want anybody making knee jerk reactions. I want everybody doing their research and really thinking this out so we as a community can make a, a thoughtful and decisive choice as to what direction we're going to go. And with that, um, guys, we appreciate it. Um, Mods, you can go ahead and start unmuting people, please. And uh, uh, Leo, Max, Alex, the rest of the Shiba Doge team, again, thank you very much for your presentation. We really do appreciate it.